Well, let's start with the league leaders, Arsenal, because they have got on paper what looks like quite a tough fixture coming up. They're facing Fulham, who have been excellent this season. Mm -hmm. But after the drama of last weekend, I mean, what a comeback it was from Arsenal. They will surely be boosted heading into this game. Yeah, absolutely. Look, it showed great character from Arsenal. It showed great determination and great drive as well. Um, there's an honesty about them that I really, really am drawn to. Mm. You know, there's something about the way they're, they're going into every game thinking we're going to win this, irrelevant of how we start the game. Now, they started on the back foot, nine seconds nine in, they're 1-0 one nil, one nil down. And it was a great bit of um, uh, uh, play from Bournemouth. Um, managed to catch Arsenal cold, you know, and if you're going to uh, show what you're about and if you want to come back and, and prove that you're actually in it for the title race and you're an actual real genuine contender, you have to react in a positive way. It took them a little while, they went two goals down, but the reaction that we saw from them, absolutely, it was top draw. The thing is, though, is when they went 2-0 down and they managed to start coming back into the game, when it got to 2 all, you just knew they were going to go on and win it, didn't you? And mm. is that the sign of a true Premier League title winner? I think it is. I think there are lots of moments when you look at teams that have won the title, there are lots of moments in their campaign where they've come back and they've rescued victory from the jaws of defeat or a point from the jaws of defeat. And I think the reason why they've signed Gabriel Jesus and Alexander Zinchenko is precisely to instill that kind of belief in the side. And if you look at Zinchenko in particular, there are a couple of moments this season where he's given interviews that have shown his leadership. Mm. He's learned how never to give up until the very last whistle at Manchester City. That's why he's won four titles. Now he's got the players in this Arsenal squad to believe. And I don't now think there is any game that they play in where they will think the points are lost until that final also goes. There's another name to, to add to that as well, Jorginho. Yes. You know, he's somebody that knows how to win. He's been there, he's done it as well. And he's, he's come in there with the Premier League experience and he's, he's just added to this already amazing, uh, confident squad. You know the interesting thing about that? Uh, just forgive me, Jules. I think as far as Jorginho is concerned, they moved for him after they couldn't get Mikhailo Mudrik. Now, Mudrik would have been a, a wonderful signing long-term, very flashy and whatever else. But if you look at Chelsea, he hasn't really given them that much. Mm. And Jorginho wouldn't have got a game there. Mm. But going to Arsenal, he would have been a, a lower-profile signing. But already he scored a key goal. He has provided real calm in yeah. that centre of midfield. Experience. But the experience that is given the entire dressing room is key because where they are now, I would argue he is more valuable to Arsenal than Mikhailo Mudrik would have been. Mm. Yeah. And what about having a player like Rhys Nelson, who probably no <laughs> one would have expected to pop up and score the winner? The fact that they've got the entire squad all chipping in with such important goals this season as well says a lot. It does. It says so much about the, the strength and depth of the club. But also, he got an assist in this game as well for, for um, Ben White, I think it was. You know, that's just, that just shows you the confidence that they're playing with. And to, to go behind nine seconds into the game, to react in a, in a positive way, not let it get them down. Obviously, once you, you Arsenal have scored one goal to, to um, half the deficit, the, the crowd around the place mm. are right behind them. And you can almost feel like they're an added player on your team. You know, it's only when you're in that situation that you realise, wow, we've actually got more than enough here to, to really benefit us and, and to move forwards. But... The confidence for, for Reese Nelson here. What lets, a hit. Let's the ball bounce, controls himself, steadies himself, calms himself down, puts his foot right through the ball. His weaker left foot, by the way, as yeah, well, yeah. while being closed down. Bournemouth had te um, 11 players in the box for the first and third goals. They had 10 players can goal, and they still weren't able to do anything about stopping Arsenal. It just goes to show the confidence that Arsenal are playing with at the moment. Yeah, Incredible. you can see what the celebrations meant, what it meant to the entire squad as well, Darren. But just to play devil's advocate, is there still a concern over the fragility that we've seen from Arsenal at separate stages this season? But to go 2-0 down against Bournemouth, is that a concern in the title running? I think you're really right to, to raise that. And I don't think it's churlish at all because I think they've only kept three clean sheets at home so far this season. Now, if you want to win the title, that has to improve. Teams that win trophies have the best defences. Yeah, one nils and the clean sheets are more important to you than it's spectacular 4-3 victories, 3-2 victories. They're great for us, exciting, <laughs> pulsating, compelling, all the adjectives. But the bottom line is that the boring teams, the teams that are able to keep out the opposition, are the ones that go on to win trophies and titles. So how are we looking at it now? We've just seen 
as we've saw, we saw there, an incredible comeback to go and win the game. Huge boost for the fans, huge boost for the players, showing great mentality and spirit to come back and turn the game around. But are Manchester City still favourites for you? <laughs> Do you know what? Arsenal are favourites for me. And oh, Arsenal, they are now. Arsenal have been favourites for me for a little while. I've always said um, I can't see City losing a game. But I'm, I'm almost the same with Arsenal. If they do, it, I can't see them losing more than one game. You know, so the two teams are going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And I think the game Arsenal will lose is the one against Manchester City, which is creeping up. I think it's in April. Mm. Um, I think that will be the one that, that is a very telling game. Five points in it. Who's your favourite, Darren, at this I've got point? I've got to go to City. I know the, the nice lady in my ear who always puts up the fixtures every time I start talking about what's happening. <laughs> yeah. I know she's going to help me with this very soon. But I do think Arsenal have got some very difficult There's a lot of nice ladies in there, Darren. You're going to have to ask um, nice They're all that. lovely. <laughs> no, no, the, the lady always helps me. She's really nice. And thank you very much for doing that. But, right on cue. Here, here we go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when I look at those fixtures, they've got to go to Liverpool. They've got to go to West Ham. They are too... <laughs> <laughs> they are two di very difficult fixtures, but look at the top. Fulham, don't take them for granted. They're in contention for a place <clears throat> in the Europa League next okay. season. Marco Silva's got them scoring goals. Craven Cottage, one of the hardest places to go yeah. in the Premier League. I don't think this is going to be easy for a side like Arsenal, who haven't won the league for 20 years, whereas City know the course, they know the distance. Yes, they haven't put together more than three wins in a row so far this season. But you know they have it within them mm. to do that. That's why I've got to make them favourites. OK, well, shall we hear from Marco Silva now then? Because he says his players have to be confident about facing the league leaders this weekend. At least to, to believe in ourselves is the main thing for us and the most important thing, to believe, believe in ourselves the way you are going to play. We know that in some moments they are going to, um, to obligate us to do some things that we don't like really, even play, playing at home. But we have to be able to, um, to handle that situation and after to play our game. Well, you mentioned it there, Darren. They're fighting for a place in Europe next season. They've only just been promoted, Jermaine. They're having an extraordinary season. And they will look at this game as just as important as Arsenal will be looking at it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Arsenal, uh, Fulham will be doing everything they've been doing all season against Arsenal. Their two fullbacks, Robinson and Tete, have been brilliant. Mm. They've shown so much energy, confidence going up and down those channels. They've freed up the wingers to give them the opportunity to express themselves as well as they need to. Um, Pol Polinia has been incredible. Yeah. He's been absolutely phenomenal in He's the middle of the field. He's banned for this game. That's the thing. And he, I think that Arsenal fans are delighted about that because and they should be so important. He's, he's offered the freedom for... Um, a lot of the other players to, to really get, get beyond Mitrovic or put the balls into Mitrovic, etc. So they've got ways of playing, um, which has been brilliant. Full of confidence, they've taken it on uh, from the back from last season. Um, look, you can see the, the stats there. Granted, they've played two games more than Newcastle and, and Liverpool, but they're right up, right behind them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're in with a, a, a chance at getting into a, a European spot. Uh, I think you're right. And I think at this stage, you want points in a board Absolutely, rather more than games so than, in hand. Yep. This time last season, Arsenal were in fourth place. They had three games in hand on West Ham and Manchester United, and they still blew fourth place because the pressure's on you to win those games. Mm. Whereas Fulham, with those 39 points, they are breathing down the necks of Newcastle, who can't score goals. Liverpool, it's still very fragile, and Spurs all over the place. Yep. I still think they're in a great position. I just wanted to ask, can I ask Jermaine? Of course you can. When you're a player in, in a side and you're up against the big team, the, the yep. team that rolls into town with all the pressure on them. Do you feel that the pressure is on them, that you've got nothing to lose, so you've got yeah. the freedom to play? Yeah, absolutely. Look, they've got everything to play for and you're the underdog. So win, lose or draw, you come away from it with... with there's no pressure on your shoulders. Mm. You, can, you can literally enjoy the game. You can play with freedom. Do you have a game like that where, where you, you, know, that you think... Yeah, of, many like, times. Many times. Go. Many times. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you scored, didn't you? Uh, well, when there's no pressure, you, see, you tend to see the best of people, you know, and that's, that's exactly what happened with, with myself in, in a load of situations. But also, Fulham are not expected to win this game against Arsenal. Both teams are going into it with, with um, off the back of really good runs. Mm. You know, they've done really well in the last five, six, seven games. So there's no pressure on either side mm. to, to really um, win the game. Both sets of fans will be happy with, with a, a, a result here. Yeah, well, Arsenal are five points ahead of Manchester City heading into the weekend. So let's talk about Pep Guardiola's side now. They face Crystal Palace. I think when we talk about Manchester City and all of their 
previous seasons where they've won the title, Darren, it, it's always in the second part of the season. Yes. They really go into another gear. Mm -hmm. Are we starting to see that with City now, with more players sharing the goals about and that depth in the squad? Is, is that why they tend to be so good in the last part of the season? Yeah, absolutely. They've got the experience. I'm talking about the course and the distance, but they've got goal scored throughout the side. They scored nearly 100 goals last season. That was without... Haaland. <laughs> now already Haaland's broken the record held by Torres and Cristiano Ronaldo for the most goals in a Premier League season. Mm -hmm. And they are going... The funny thing is, when you look at that graphic, they're not actually as going as great guns as they were before because you would expect them to beat Nottingham Forest easily. You'd expect them to beat Leipzig easily. But the point is that we are reaching a stage that they know so well. Mm. They're so good at handling the pressure. For us in newspapers, it's brilliant because what we didn't want this season was a procession. Liverpool aren't what they were last season. And the concern would have been that City win it by a street. That's not good for the Premier League. That's not good for the competition. Arsenal coming from the clouds, as they have done, to launch this title challenge. And Manchester United research, and I know you're going to talk about them later, but in terms of the title race, it's brilliant. Yeah. For us, for everyone watching at home, for everyone around the world who's watching us and enjoying us. Hello. Hello. Um, <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> and I think the Manchester City ability to find a way to win at this stage of the season. I think the two difference, the difference between the two sides is that Guardiola is a psychologist and he's used that psychology many times for the last five seasons. Arteta has been the good guy, he's helped Arsenal through difficult moments, but has he come through this, the equivalent of the final furlong if you're a racehorse, mm. you know, that last lap if you're a motor racing driver? Um, I, I think he's at a disadvantage to Guardiola, that's why. I think they'll do it. Five points right now. We've all watched enough football to now. Five points right now is it nothing mean anything. in title winning terms. Ah, oh, see, I, I don't know because I think you, where are those? You can see Manchester City going on and winning every game. I don't think yep. anyone doubts that. But can you see Arsenal dropping more than five 100%, points? 100%. Can you? I think both sides will drop points. Whether City lose games is a different story. I see both teams, both sides dropping points. Mm -hmm. Arsenal will could drop points at Liverpool. Liverpool, right now... City, City didn't beat Forest. Yeah, I know, but I look at, I look <laughs> so, at Liverpool you know, now. Liverpool have scored. Got, I, of course. I but wouldn't they look had at a, this. They, they had a blip in, um, in Europe as well, don't forget. Yeah, no, In between right, a very good run. So there are, there are moments during games, if they don't take the chances, they will get punished for it. Here's and an, teams that will make you pay for it. Here's another interesting thing with this weekend is that yet again, Manchester City play their game first yeah. before <laughs> Arsenal do. Yeah. Yeah. So they've got the opportunity to close the gap to two points again ahead of Arsenal playing on Sunday. Yeah. Psychologically, like, <laughs> the players, surely they're watching that, aren't they, Arsenal? Yeah, they'll be getting frustrated with that <laughs> every single weekend, it seems almost, you know. Um, but what they're doing really well... The way is, the European games fall, why that's happened, though, because yeah, obviously because, because Arsenal they can't play. play on Thursday, they don't play till Sunday. And the thing the is, Premier if League. Arsenal were playing first, they'd say, why are we playing first? <laughs> <laughs> so it, they've got to be where they are. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're, um, the pressure is on uh, Arsenal more so than City. Yeah. City can go into it and say, right, win, lose or draw, at least we've played the game, we've done the best that we can do and, and picked up as many points as we possibly can. Whereas, you know, if they win the game... Arsenal have to pick up the points. They have to win. Seven nil against Manchester United. Liverpool cannot wait to get back on the pitch this weekend. And it's Bournemouth who they beat nine nil earlier on this season. Let's hear from Jurgen Klopp, but first, Gary O'Neill. The 9 nil doesn't come into my mind at all. Obviously, we were in a very different place then. Um, yeah, so the, the lads will just prepare for this. Like, it's a it's another game against a, a very, very good side. They're, they're in good form at the moment. Um, obviously, have fantastic attacking threat. Um, so, yeah, it'll be a tough ask, of course. But, no, we approach the game like it's a, a game that we need to take three points from, and, and that's all. I'm 100% sure that Bournemouth will fight like crazy and um, that's something we have to expect. There's nothing else to think about. It's a general thing that, that we want to, we all know we want to, and I said it before, we want to <coughs> squeeze everything out of this season. That means obviously if it's somehow possible, um, we want to we go into the, the top four, clear, but um, 
nobody knows that in the moment, but it must be our our aim anyway. And um, but it has nothing to do with the game and not thinking about whatever other other stuff. It's just being fully focused about Bournemouth. Well, I have to let you into what's been happening in the studio while we've been hearing those interviews because these two next to me both laughed out loud when Gary O'Neill said, we haven't thought about the 9-0. It's a lie. To play as it's a lie. They've <laughs> analysed every single goal and see where they could improve and where, where they made the mistakes. I'm telling you now. I've been in a situation, not 9-0, mm. but 4-5. And um, you know, the next day was hard work. <laughs> Honestly, you're sitting in the, in the meeting room with the, every single goal on slow-mo, seeing where you are, seeing where the defenders are, seeing who's at fault, seeing where you can improve. It's painful. Will it, will it come back into play, though, ahead of this game? Because obviously that was so long ago now. It was in August. It was under a different manager. Will Gary O'Neill be saying, look what happened last time you played them? Will, it, no. will that have come into play coming into this game? No. Right. Not that one, not that one. Because what you want to do going into a, a game against a team in form such as Liverpool is uh, concentrate and focus on your good parts, the right. good elements. Try and build up that confidence. By looking back at that, that 9-0 is going to shatter any, any mm. shred of confidence they've got. So they will look at where they can try and exploit Liverpool, possibly um, another nice, neat little uh, intricate uh, set piece from a goal kick, from a free kick, a corner, etc. Where they can catch them cold. That's, that's where they can beat them. Well, that's what they did against Arsenal last week. Sorry, I, I'm just putting some Liverpool players into my fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs> you got a wild one. Is that triple here. captain? Dead, <laughs> deadline tomorrow for that. In fact, we're going to talk about FPL a little bit later. But it, obviously, last weekend against Arsenal, they did spring a surprise, Bournemouth. They, you know, scored after nine seconds. They went 2 0 up. I know it was a, a horrific defeat for them in the end after being 2 0 up Painful, against the yeah. leaders. But surely they've got to take some positives from being able to go 2-0 up against the team top of the table. I think you're right. They can take those positives. There were good moments going forward where they did look good. They missed an opportunity for what could have been 3-0. Yeah, yeah. yeah they sure were in been. really good form going forward. The problem with this, particularly for... Well, let's focus on actually the good parts because this is a terrific move and it worked on it, Gary O'Neill said afterwards beforehand. I think there's complacency in the Arsenal defence. Yeah, they weren't ready, were they? weren't ready, yeah. They weren't ready and they weren't ready for that either. They That's were all a great set piece, though. And, but you have to say, I think from here, they should have at least got something from the game mm. and they didn't manage it very well. And my concern for Bournemouth is that Yes, they can focus on going forward, but Liverpool have the players to really hurt you if you don't. If, if, if there are men in your team that don't man their posts, mm -hmm. and they they got players coming back, Nunes is now starting to score the goals where he was unlucky earlier in the season. Gakpo is absolutely flying, and Mohamed Salah can score from anywhere. So for me, it isn't just one or two players that you have to stop. You cannot afford to be pouring forward when you've got those three marauding as they do. I this is what I mean. We're joking about it, of course, but the, one of the interesting things this movement here is exceptional, and that's a finish of real confidence and class. This is right place, right time. Bang. Awful defending as well. Do you know what I've noticed about every single one of these Liverpool goals? So you've got Gakpo, you've got um, Salah and you've got Nunes. Nunes up top. With every single one of the attacks, at least one of the three of them are inside the 18-yard box. At least one of the three, every single goal. And that says to me that Liverpool are, are a confidence. So this is like a new breed of the, the Firmino, Salah and Mane. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a younger hungrier version of that you know they've got more energy and when you're a striker do you feel looking at that what you did last week and and the fact that the goals are starting to come in for example in the case of Nunes again yeah are you looking at Bournemouth with respect to them and saying I'm gonna get weighed in here yeah 100 percent look you go into it full of confidence now you know each one of the forward players got two goals each each they got a brace each so you're looking at it thinking right well that was against uh, Manchester United we're playing Bournemouth no disrespect but we're, we're, we're surely going to score multiple goals here. Let's fill your boots. Let's get the confidence up. Let's put a lot of pressure on everybody else. They've seen that we score goals against some of the biggest teams in the world. Let's show, let's show them what we're about now. There's, there's so much confidence. And the way the fullbacks, uh, Robertson and Trent, are bombing on all the time, they're getting back to the, the season before. That's what, that's what Liverpool have been lacking this season. But also, when you look at this Liverpool team after winning 7-0 last week, they now can't afford to play Bournemouth and drop points. So there's actually, strangely, a fair bit of pressure on this game for Liverpool to back it up. I think you're bang on, Jules. And this is, I think, 
What Klopp will be working on with this Liverpool team is attitude. The attitude can't be as complacent as the Arsenal's were. It might well be that the Arsenal game and the pattern of the game from last week will be incredibly helpful for Klopp because he will say to them, look at that, look at the way that Bournemouth hurt them and took advantage of them turning up effectively and expecting to win. We cannot go there and expect to win and they will show Bournemouth real respect but they will f and they will fight for the right to be able to play and then they will look to score their goals. They won't sort of go in and think, oh my goodness, we're going to start filling our boots from the first minute again, because that's not going to happen. But I do think that they will go there and they will treat Bournemouth as they would have done Manchester United. I think they'll just go on the front foot, to be honest with you, because that's when they're at their best. Like you saw in the first half against Manchester United, they were a little bit cautious. There were moments where they were trying to outplay Manchester United, soak up a little bit of pressure. But then the second half, they just spun them. Mm. They put a lot of pressure on them and just played that high intensity football. Mm where they that that's where they got their their um benefits from and and the point for liverpool is that spurs are all over the place as, as i've said yep. a couple of times so there's a real opportunity to put that pressure on them mm. and 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 claim that fourth yep. place nobody believed that they could finish are they in the favorites top four. for the top four now would you say absolutely, I think fighting so. for it. absolutely yep. yes yeah. newcastle are not scoring enough goals they've found they've forgotten how to score goals Anthony Gordon may well go on to become a wonderful player, but I think for their momentum, he was a wrong player to buy in January. They needed to buy a striker who could convert the chances they create. They've got but a they've... great defensive base, but you have to be able to turn the draws into wins. Mm. Is that not what they brought in Alexander Isak for? Because yeah. he's, he's a, a fantastic player, yeah. and I'm, I'm a huge admirer of his being a forward. I, lo I love his movement, I love his pace, I love how direct he is. He's very good in front of goal as well. He's just been not been afforded the same time and opportunities as Callum Wilson has, yeah. you know. So. so if you think about Liverpool, look how many forwards they've got. Yeah. And everyone agree. said, oh, you don't need Gakpo. Well, yeah. actually, they did. Because, <laughs> and now they've got Jota on the bench. They've got Firmino on the bench. They've got... Uh, a wealth. A wealth, yeah. Sorry, if I say anymore, yeah. anyone who supports Bournemouth is going to turn off. So <laughs> yeah. say anymore. But they've got lots of forwards. And I think yeah. when you are a big club, you can't have enough firepower. Mm. And Newcastle's just doesn't have it. And actually, now they're in danger of falling outside the top six. Well, that firepower from Liverpool meant it.